My name is Steven Sarson. I'm with Beckhart Corporation. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the differences between high tensile wire and low carbon wire. We're going to talk a little bit about how it's made and also look at some brake strengths on it, some comparisons of those braking strengths. A lot of people don't really understand the difference between a high tensile wire and a low carbon wire. Low carbon wire typically has about a 0.28% carbon content. High tensile wire has about a 0.64% carbon content in it. One of the advantages to high tensile wire is that it's a lot lighter, but in the same case, a lot stronger. A lot of people ask the question, because it's a thinner wire, will it rust faster? Well, if it wasn't coated, theoretically, yes, it would rust away faster. But we use different coatings on the high tensile wire that allow us to add to the life expectancy and longevity of that wire. We'll talk a little bit about those coatings a little bit later. A lot of people also ask about the installation on high tensile wire. Is it more difficult to install because it's a little bit stiffer? In the long run, it's probably a little bit easier because you don't have to stretch it nearly as hard to get it to stay tight. You just kind of tension it and you're ready to go with your finished product. To do some of these comparisons on the breaking strength of the wire, we're going to use what's called a tensile tester. Our wire will go here between these two jaws and it literally will pull that wire until it breaks. And then up here on our gauge, it'll show us our breaking strength. The red pointer will remain in the position that the wire broke in and it'll allow us to do a comparison between the two wires. Again, the first one I'm going to do is 12 and a half gauge low carbon and a 15 and a half gauge high tensile wire. The machine is starting to slowly pull that wire apart and you can see by the gauge that it goes up to about 560 pounds and it pretty much stops but if you notice the machine is still moving so what's happening now is that wire literally is getting longer and longer as it pulls. So again our low carbon 12 and a half gauge wire broke right here at about 560 pounds. We'll go ahead and pull the uh, 15 and a half gauge. Now one of the things that I want you to realize is that we're not going to see major differences in the braking strength. In fact if you look at it it's pretty much the same. Next one that we're going to look at is comparison between 14 gauge high tensile and an 11 gauge low carbon wire. Okay we're going to go ahead and then and break our 11 gauge wire and again, we're going to get somewhere up here around 800 pounds. So we'll just leave the, the red marker where it is so you can see as we get into the higher tensile strengths, you can start to see some of the differences between the wires. And again, about 760 pounds or so, creeping up towards 800. Notice our pointer has stalled here on the gauge. The machine is still pulling it, so again, we're experiencing that elongation that's in that wire. Now we'll go ahead and put our 14 gauge high tensile wire in there. Notice it reaches the same point that the 11 gauge did and then the wire breaks. Next one that we're going to look at is a uh, 9 gauge low carbon wire versus a 12 and a half gauge high tensile wire. These are typically found in field fences. A lot of you are very familiar with a 9 gauge field fence and then a 12 and a half gauge is in our gaucho high tensile field fence. Note on here you'll see a lot of the elongation that we've talked about with the 9 gauge wire and this is going to go up here probably about 1100 pounds or so which is a little bit above the ASTM standard but as long as we're above the standard it's always where we want to be. Now we're going to put our 12 and a half gauge high tensile in there. Now the gaucho line wire is going to break at about 1040 pounds it's not quite as high a breaking strength as what you see in the 11 gauge, but really for all intents and purposes, it's pretty much the same breaking strength. It didn't take real long for it to break. So again, we're starting to creep down in that elongation factor that we talked about earlier. And one of the things about the elongation, because the high tensile wire doesn't elongate as much, it adds flexibility to that wire. It'll actually give when your animals impact that wire, but then it springs back and it doesn't doesn't stretch so you don't have that sag or that bag in your fence that you see a lot of times with a low carbon wire. Many of you are familiar with our fixed knot product which is um, pretty much the premium product on the market today and I'm going to go ahead and break the line wire from the fixed knot and this is going to get up here probably close to 1400 pounds before we see it break and that broke probably at about 1480 pounds. And then the last one I'm going to break is a piece of 200,000 psi wire. This is the wire that typically is used in our coils for high tensile electric fencing. Again, we'll get up there at about 1500 pounds. 
which is really what the, the breaking strength on our 200,000 PSI wire would be. When we talk about high tensile wire, we have different PSI ratings to it. The higher the PSI rating, the higher the breaking strength is going to be. If you think about some of the wires that we broke, we had a 12 and a half gauge low carbon wire that broke at less than 600 pounds, the gaucho line wire that broke just a little bit over 1,000 pounds, we had the fixed knot line wire that broke around 1,400, and then we had the high tensile coil which broke around 1,500. Same diameter wire, if you look at them, they're all, all basically the same. You really can't tell any difference between them looking at them. But again, the tensile strength varies on that, and the higher the tensile strength, the stiffer and stronger that wire is going to be. To sum it all up, if you want a strong fence that's going to last you a long time, buy a high tensile wire with a class 3 coating or the new ZA Plus paint. If you have questions about what fence is right for your installation and your type of animal, contact your local Beckhart representative or farm store dealer.